all right what is going on beautiful people welcome back it's your boy blue and as you can see we are here in la union station this is train sim world 4 and the metrolink f125 is just now departing here off of track 10 heading towards lancaster but uh yeah as we always do we're out here hanging out at the station doing some train spotting before our own service begins uh we're expecting our service to be at uh 6 39 it's currently 6 31 a.m as you saw just run by there on the timing screen but uh we'll be expecting track four which is over on our left somewhere which we'll check out here in just a bit but that right there is the back end that's the Rotem cab car uh you could also drive from that end of the train as well it's definitely funny looking that's for sure it's and that's how it is in real life it's a it's one funny looking back in oh i'm not a fan but it's on its way out there's a few pastures looks like they're just getting here as well so we'll make our way downstairs and uh we'll just kind of check out the uh the station a bit how about that look at that check this guy out carrying a suitcase <laughs> that was pretty cool so that is one thing that's been updated is uh um they've added passengers that are now carrying uh random objects I shouldn't say random objects. Oh, there's a guy in a suitcase right there. They're not random objects. It's a few objects that they can now carry uh, with them as they uh, board and deboard the trains and walk around the stations and things like that. But anyways, let's go ahead and head downstairs and see how the station looks underneath the tracks. So um, I have never personally been to L.A. Union Station before. I have been to L.A. before, but I've never been to L.A. Union Station. Look to our left here and to our right. And it's pretty empty down here. Uh, I don't know if it's like this in real life. Like I said, I've never been here. So I can't say, but it, it feels it definitely feels empty. Uh, it's very wide, so definitely can fit a lot of passengers. I can definitely see it being very busy in LA uh, as people are trying to commute to and from uh, wherever they need to go. Over here is the Metro Gold Line with a couple Metro Link um, ticket kiosks, which is pretty sweet, but sadly they do not work. I mean, if I could at least walk up and click on it and grab a ticket, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be nice. But it doesn't. There's another guy over there in a the suitcase, a few passengers walking in. So, but yeah, it's fairly empty. Fairly empty. I don't know, again, if it's both like this. I'm not sure if anything at all is on the sides. So, we're expecting track four. So, 4A, 4B. Uh, we'll actually take the ramp here instead of taking the stairs. And excuse me, Mr. Pitman. Thank you very much. But, yeah, so, I mean, other than them adding uh, the ability for passengers to, you know, carry suitcases and um, briefcases and things like that, the passengers have not changed. Uh, they have not changed at all in the way they work and the way they look since Train Sim World 2, I believe, which is when they had the big rush hour update. And uh, I will say, to be honest, um, I still stand on the fact that i believe that train sim world 4 uh and honestly train sim world 3 as well both should have just been like um root bundles with uh with an update that's 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 my personal opinion on that but anyways uh yeah so rush hour brought in the uh kind of like the coats the uh the winter coats the rain coats the umbrellas which are all really cool honestly um i, I think it does add a lot to the experience of seeing pastures actually interacting with the weather and the weather conditions if it's raining there's umbrellas if it's cold they're wearing coats so currently i think it's uh november so it's a bit cold in la in the morning in november so they're wearing some coats so this guy also has a cell phone that's something else that they've added as well as you'll see uh pastors randomly uh, on their cell phones as they should be that's very common in real life and look at him he's even talking his lips are moving he's really into it <laughs> he's really into the conversation too i think i just saw the into that animation i think um anyway so here we are the uh the back of la union and that um building back there that big sky not skyscraper but that big um high-rise building is the la metropolitan building i believe the uh, la county metropolitan building and that smaller building on the right is actually the east side of union station and then the other side obviously is on the left and then behind us we have a, a bit of a tease a bit of a peak at la downtown way off in the distance definitely glad that they modeled that and they kept that within the lod you know sometimes um 
when you're really far from stuff and train some world, they just decide not to model it or it just doesn't pop up because you're not close enough. So I'm glad we can actually see some of the LA, uh, the, the high rise buildings, the skyscrapers is definitely good to see. But here it is. Here's the um, passenger cars uh, for Metrolink. I think, I don't think it looks too bad. Um, I think the wheels look weird, but that's just how it is in real life. Like, it's like the brakes are like in the front or something. I don't really sure how that works, but uh, it's definitely interesting. Metrolink has finally made it into the train zone world. This is the first, there's another guy on a cell phone. This is the first Metrolink train and service to be added to, uh, to train zone world. So that's that's good. It's good to see another um, new like company being added to train zone world. It's, it's going to definitely add to the diversity uh, of what you can get inside train zone world. So here's the F-125 and you, it's, I have it turned down right now, so you can't hear it too good, but um, it sounds pretty good. I love that, that bassy sound of the diesel engine there. But here it is, track four, 918. What time is it? Because I want to make sure we don't miss our service start time. We have time to get the train started. So it is 637. All right, cool, 637. So we have two minutes to get the train ready for its service. Go ahead and hop on aboard. Let's see, can I hop up here? There we go. We'll climb up, shut the door, and we'll go ahead and claim this service. So for those who are wondering and who may want to give this service a try themselves, this is AV201 from LA Union to Lancaster, part one, 6.39 AM using the EMD F125 Metrolink, and this is service to Vista Canyon. All right, sweet. So let's go ahead and get this baby ready for its service. We'll obviously get the engine run on, the fuel pump on, and the general generator field switch turned on. The train is already powered on, so we don't have to start the engine. Um, I, again, I, I've mentioned this in many times before. Uh, I wish there was more chances to start these trains cold and dark. All right, so we got the reverser inserted and into the neutral position as it is. We'll also go to the right here and we'll set the brake mode to passenger. That's interesting, it has a freight mode. I wonder if they ever use these for freight hauling. And then we'll go ahead and put our independent brake into full service and we will release the automatic brake. So we don't have to wait as long before we roll off. So again, service is starting here in just a few minutes. You can see our brakes are releasing there. Our equalizer reservoir is now at the top and our brake pipe is now uh, finishing its release there. That's good. Uh, what else do we have down here? We also have the uh, engine cab heater, we have windshield wipers, auxiliary pulse lights, attendant call button, conductor signal. We have the horn sequencer, the sander, regular horn, and then the bell on and off switch. Off here on the right, we have the ATS acknowledge and the alerter reset, which I don't think I'm going to have turned on today. And then behind us, we have a few more options here. We have the number board lights, various lights, and then our circuit breakers are all in there. All right, so it's time to unlock the doors. Let's go ahead and do so. All right, so passengers are boarded and we are ready to go ahead and close the doors back up. Sweet, doors are shut and we can go ahead and put the reverser into forward. And again, our brakes are already released. We'll just release our independent brake here on the right and we'll give it some throttle there we go we'll put it on notch two so i'm not sure if i mentioned this yet already but i am using the rail driver um you cannot see it on camera um today but um i am using the rail driver so the rail driver does work with train sim world 4 by default there's no special uh drivers or software you need to install it just works uh, on its own so you guys know i've been using the rail driver for a couple of years i believe now and i've uh, been really enjoying it and i cannot drive without it it's just immersion braking if I don't use it. So uh, rolling out of the station here, out of LA, uh, got a nice slow creep of 12 miles per hour. So we're gonna take it nice and slow. We'll turn the bell on. There we go. So the bell's on and we'll go ahead and put it on idle there. And we'll just kind of roll through out of here. So one thing to keep in mind for those who are running this service or any service out of LA, sometimes these um, lights here will remain red. So you might not get the green light immediately after your service starts. So be careful, pay attention. I've already failed a couple of times just not paying attention to um, the signals 
just assuming that I was going to get a green light rolling out the station like we do today. We have a couple of green lights rolling out. So nice and slow. So we'll do 12 miles per hour here initially. And then once we get past that um, light up there or that signal up there, we should get the, um, the go ahead to do about 25. And then it'll go up to 30 and then 50 and onwards uh, until we get to 79 miles per hour, which is going to be our max line speed on this route in Antelope Valley. But um, yeah, once we get around this corner and pass this light, we should get to go a bit faster. All right, here we go. So we are now free to go up to 25 miles per hour. I'm only going to put it in notch two, though. This train is actually pretty good at picking up speed pretty quickly, and I have tend to struggle maintaining slow speed, so I'm going to do the best I can here. So we're going to go to 25 miles per hour, and we'll cut the throttle out here uh, just a little bit. So right there, right up ahead of us, uh, if we were to go right on this track towards that red light up ahead, that would actually take us over to the Union Pacific Yard. There's actually a huge Union Pacific Yard right over there by where the sun is currently. We're going with an idle there. Yeah, so just over there is a Union Pacific Yard, massive freight yard, which would be pretty cool to see in the game. But sadly, it uh, I don't think we can even drive over there, I don't believe. But speaking of freight, though, that's one thing I would love to see on this route. So currently, I'm using the early access version uh, of Train Sim World 4. So um, I only have access to the Train Sim World 4 routes. So that includes Anslow Valley Line, Vorarlberg, uh, East Coast Main Line, the Scotsman, and the Vectron. Um, but all the rest of my DLC has not been ported over yet. But if you do have Train Sim World 3 or Train Sim World 2, and you buy Train Sim World 4, uh, it should bring over all of your older DLC, so all your freight DLC, you know, everything, everything that you owned before uh, should still be, you should st should still have access to it in Train Sim World 4. You just won't get any of the new Train Sim World features like the fog or stuff like that, um, sadly. Uh, but that's the way it usually works. But freight i would love to see freight on this route um i don't believe there's a lot of freight on this route in real life as we're now going up to 30 miles per hour going uh underneath a couple overpasses here which is pretty cool i like this section of the route as you drive underneath these bridges uh as we're driving right next to um the uh the drainage there on our right but um i do believe once uh once I get my DLC and stuff like that um, added to Train to World 4, I believe we may see either some static freight cars, or I'm not sure how much freight presence we're going to get, but uh, I'll definitely make a video um, doing some freight stuff, or at least seeing some freight on, on this route in the near future. All right, 50 miles per hour. There we go. Let's go ahead and add a bit more juice to it, and we'll pick up the pace a little bit more we'll double we'll do double time going up one percent gradient uh it's a pretty easy part of the route to be honest yeah right now we're just kind of picking up speed as we get farther away from la union station uh this is very urban area as you can see a lot of highways going over the tracks and um as we're just kind of creeping through the uh through la here but as we get a bit farther uh we'll get faster speeds the max line speed is about 79 miles per hour i believe um, but we'll do 50 for now. So I'll continue to bring the speed up as we pass 40. Check that out. Check that out. So it's nice to have Metrolink. It's nice to have LA now in Train Sim World. And it definitely wouldn't have been my first choice uh, of a route for the new game. But hey, that's what we got. So we make the best of it. Let's go see the outside. So here on the left side, we have uh, the Metrolink depot i believe or at least one of them and there's a train sitting there so this is where the trains would go if they're not in service or if they're waiting to get worked on stuff like that uh, it's a bit empty in my opinion i feel like you should see a lot more uh a lot more static trains there that would be nice yeah that's way too empty way too empty 
way too empty. And up here on the left, as we're coming up, is uh, I believe like a service station kind of thing, where uh, the trains will get refueled. There's actually a little bit of a, a fueling area here, so you get the train refueled before they head out and put back into service. There's a couple trains sitting there, but still, feel like it should be a lot more busy now. I mean, just static. I mean, it, you 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 never. I think people underestimate just how much static trains and static freight cars add to the whole uh, train experience. Just having them sitting there makes it feel like something's going on. You know what I'm saying? So, anyways, sun is rising behind us here and I'm looking forward to a hopefully pretty nice drive here through the Antelope Valley line. All right, we're approaching Glendale, and we'll go ahead and jump on the brakes here. I am not an expert <laughs> uh, with the braking distance on this train yet, so I'm going to get on the brakes here pretty hard to make sure we don't miss it. Full service is set as we're approaching Glendale Station. It's like another train is actually here already that we're going to meet with. All right, so that's plenty enough braking there. We can let it roll in here slowly. Yep, there's a uh, another train here. That's pretty cool. A bit of a, I think it's a passenger crosswalk. Doing about 18 as we approach the end of the platform. Adding a little bit more brakes. We'll do our best to get here and get stopped at the end of, there we go. That should be good right there. There it is, we made it. All right, we're all set. Brakes released. Let's go ahead and roll on out to our next stop, which is going to be Burbank downtown. It's about five miles away. Oh, look at that. Another train coming by on our left. That was pretty cool. All right, so this time we have 79 miles per hour as our limit. We were just past 75. All right, let's get on the automatic brakes here. As you come across the crossing here, we'll leave the bell running. Get rid of the dynamic brakes. And see if we can get stopped here in Burbank. All right, looking good. Looking good. I don't see any passengers here, though. At least not yet. All right, bring it to a stop, bring it to a stop. All right, and we're gonna wanna open up the right side doors. And with the sun hitting the train just right, I think it's a good opportunity for photo mode, which is one of my personal new favorite features in Trains in the World 4. I think I probably spend more time in photo mode than I do like driving trains in Trains in the World, to be honest. Like it's basically like a a desktop uh, background uh, generator for me. All right, so let's go field of view. We'll get us nice tight. The 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 lower I should say the tighter your field of view is, uh, the more of that blurry depth of field effect you can kind of get. So if we, if we back the camera up a bit, yeah, around there maybe, and then we kind of tighten the field of view there and then I'll go and fix the blurry. This is a little too blurry. We'll change the focal point to the front of the train. We can also do the back if we want it. We'll do the front of the train like so. And I'm actually going to turn down the depth of field a little bit just so we can get a bit more of the front of the train there. Maybe we'll turn it up. I don't know. That should be fine right there. That works. And I won't do anything with the color. I don't really mess with the color all too much. And we'll take that screenshot. We'll hit the space bar and we'll save and upload. Not my best picture, but hey, um, I'll get some good ones in the future. All right, doors are all shut. So we can release our brakes. We'll hit the bell. And again, we still have a 79. Uh, actually, that's not true. We have a 35 coming up uh, fairly soon in probably a quarter mile or so. But we'll still get our speed up as much as we can here. As we roll out of Burbank South, our next stop will be Burbank North, which is about just under three miles away. 
Uh, I mentioned this in my review, but here on the south end of the uh, Antelope Valley line, there's a, a lot of kind of clustered uh, tracks and uh, and stops. You'll do a lot of stopping every few miles. But once you get to the north, uh, we won't have as many stops. And again, we have a, uh, a red over a yellow, which means we'll be merging to the right here. There we go. And that's the reason why we have that 35 mile per hour speed limit, because we are uh, converging tracks. Once we get over here, I think we should have clear track and uh, be clear to go 50 miles an hour once the back of the train passes that signal. Uh, I wish we had a distance counter in this train because the only way to know that the back of your train has passed the signal is to just kind of go outside and look. Uh, but in reality, you would have an end of train device or something in here in your screen to tell you, hey, um, yeah, whenever I click on the length counter, it does nothing. So um, it would actually count down your train to tell you, hey, this, uh, the back of your train has passed, and uh, you can start doing whatever you need to do with that information. All right, so up to 50 miles an hour for now, 2.2 away from North Burbank Airport, which is I love flying into the airport and flights in. All right, we are looking good on time. We're gonna start hopping on the brakes. We're now gonna converge over to a single track section here as we approach Burbank North. And I'm gonna get on the brakes pretty aggressively here. I have yet to like lock up the wheels uh, where I'm like wheel slipping, at least not in dry conditions. I'm sure it's a lot easier to do when you're driving in the snow or in the rain. It won't be very common to see snow on this route. Maybe up north you might see a little bit in rare occasions. I believe it has snowed uh, up north before. I don't know if it's ever snowed in LA though. Now that I think about it. Because remember we are in LA. Alright, and we're gonna stop right here. Plenty of platform left. There we go. Look at that. There's a hot dog stand over there. There's actually a lot of hot dog stands on this route. All right. Doors closed. Once again, automatic brake set to off. And we'll start adding in the power. Let's go. Next stop is going to be Sun Valley. Track one. Under two miles away. All right, approaching Sun Valley. And we got a railroad crossing here as well. And yet another hot dog stand. About 74% braking, might be too much. I think I've been braking a little too hard. I don't really trust the brakes yet on this thing. I'm not confident in my braking or how late I can brake. I haven't figured out what the latest I can break is. We're still on a single track portion as we roll into Sun Valley track one. And it looks like we're just on time. And we'll let the train come to a stop here on its own here. Now I wish that that, uh, that mirror right there worked. That'd be pretty nice. All right, that's good. Let's go ahead and unlock the right side doors this time. And we won't be here for long, so I'm actually going to hop out here just for a quick second because I spotted a missing route map sign, which is right here. So there's the Los Angeles route map for Anselmo Valley. So started in LA Station. We are currently here in Sun Valley. So we have a bit of a bigger hop up to San Fernando and then Newhall, Santa Clarita, Via Princesa, Vista Canyon. And then you can see there's a bit more bigger gaps going the rest of the way. All right, shutting the doors. Once they close, we're gonna release these brakes here. Let those start to charge back up. And there it is, we're ready to go. Back on the throttle. Speed limit is still 79 miles per hour. And if you look right there off in front of us, right there, that X is 
marks that we have a crossing coming up so we'll go ahead and lean on the horn here right after we run out of Sun Valley there we go it's gonna be two long one short and another long and then for that last long you want to just hold it through the crossing if you can in our case we're a little early so we'll hold the next one there we go kill the bell all right 6.3 miles that's going to give us a chance to kind of stretch our legs here and get up to our top speed before we have to stop again in san fernando So there's a bit of a shot of the mountains off on the right there. Uh, sadly, I'm not sure if I got a shot for you guys of the mountains uh, closer to LA down south. Those are actually really nice looking mountains. These mountains here on our right now look eh, okay. They're not as nice as the Vorarlberg Mountains. Um, it is something about them. I'm not sure what it is. Something about them looks a bit off. I'm not sure if it's shading or maybe it's just like, maybe there's lower detail. Uh, they do have the the LiDAR data and texture, man, we're getting a lot of stutters going up through here, man. Wow. And I think I mentioned that earlier, but uh, one of my biggest complaints about Train Sim World 4 is that they did not fix that. Uh, I had the exact same problem in Train Sim World 3 and the same problem back in Train Sim World, the original. All right, let's go ahead and hop on the brakes here. Uh, maybe a little bit hard. We'll do 75%. That seemed to work earlier. As we roll up on Silmar, San Fernando. A bit more brakes. I think we're a little fast here. Hopefully we don't overrun. Oh boy, I'm not sure how this is going to go here. Come on, come on. Come on. Oh yeah, we're, we're fast. We're fast. And we're going to definitely roll right by. We're still doing 30, 20. We might, we might make it. Let's see. Oh my god, the stutter. And you know what? That works for me. We don't need to loco at the platform. That's perfect, actually. But yeah, I mean, as I was saying earlier, that stuttering thing is, in my personal opinion, unacceptable. I don't know what's causing it. Um, actually, I do know. I've been told that it's supposed to be the uh, the tiles loading in like up ahead of us, like the scenery tiles. But oh man. I sure wish they would fix that. It really, it really makes the high-speed trains uh, difficult to enjoy. To be honest, um, there's a lot to enjoy with Train Sim World, but that right there is so immersion-breaking. I can't even under, I can't even explain. Um, and it's been a problem since the first Train Sim World. I'm sure you have the same problem if you've been pl playing Train Sim World three, two, whatever. Um, but I'm really hoping they fix that, uh, find a workaround around it. Uh, my personal suggestion was that they, instead of loading the scenery while you drive, uh, to load the scenery, uh, on the initial loading. That's what I think would be better. Uh, yes, it would definitely extend the initial load times to get into the game. But if, if I, if I got to take a little bit more time to load the scenery initially before I load into the into the scenario and I can have a smooth experience the whole way I would much prefer that um, there's got to be something they could do about that all right anyways enough ranting about that lock the doors and we can continue on to our next stop it's been a beautiful sunrise today is it is they closing yep there they are there we go all right next we have new all track two all right brakes release I'm personally honest. I can't believe we actually made that. <laughs> I, I I can't believe we actually made. I did not think we were gonna make that stop. All right, seven point five miles to the next one. So this is what I was talking about earlier. We have a single track section. We've been single track for a bit of a while. Um, the other track we saw before we got into this station was actually a siding, but um, this is all single track here. I'm not sure how long we'll be single track, but the good news is that at least we have pretty um, a nice high speed to. To run we have 60 right now we should get 79 again i do know i believe it does slow down again once we get closer to um 
uh, to the mountains. So we're on the dynamic break now as uh, we are starting to approach the mountains. We're getting into the canyon area and we've got to get down to 45 miles per hour and soon we'll go down to 35. And you can also see we've got a flashing yellow because we're converging over into a single track again. Uh, we're about four, uh, about four, about five, five miles away. But uh, as you can see at the top left, we have 10 minutes to get there. And the reason for that is because we are going to have to slow down as we drive through this mountain section. So it's going to take us a bit longer uh, to get through there because we got to go so slow. This is a very dark single track tunnel, but here we are coming out the other end. And you can see there we have a red over yellow, which means we'll be converging to the right here as well. And there's a speed limit sign. That means we're gonna go to 45 miles per hour here very soon. But I do like this section of the route. It is a bit slower, um, which is fine, but it is very scenic. Um, you'll see the, uh, the, just the, the mountains and the, the terrain around you just kind of closes in. There's a lot more trees. Um, and it's a pretty cool section of track and again they have actually definitely made uh, the ground textures and everything look much better um, it's not as dull as it used to be it's not extremely high res uh, as you can kind of see there on the left and on the right but uh, when you're kind of in the train running as we're starting to speed here a little bit um, you don't notice it as much but it's definitely an upgrade it's definitely better and I'm looking forward to um to seeing what else is possible with this uh these new um scenery making techniques that they've they've been using but i think as far as scenery goes like from like that canyon section is probably my favorite se section and we have another train here meeting us here as well it's actually a pretty nice looking station right here here in New Wall, let's go ahead and get on to the the brakes here. And let's get the whole train in the station, please. There's another Metro Link there. Yeah, this this uh, route is dominated by Metro Link. This is mainly a Metro Link route, so you're not going to see many other. You're not going to see Amtrak out here. You're not going to really see any BNSF. All right, there we go. And we'll kill the bell and open the right side doors. All right, brakes release again, and we're on our way. All right, here's our next stop, Santa Clarita. And we're already nice and slow as we're now facing the sun. And we're just gonna do some, a little bit of braking here. Actually, we're gonna go all the way full service. This thing seems to take quite a while to kind of slow down at slower speeds. And we'll get a stop right at the six car, even though we don't have six cars. I think we just have three cars. All right, there we are. All right, next stop, Via Princesa.
All right, here we are approaching Via Princesa. And I think we should be good on the brakes here. Another single track portion of the line. Actually, I th yeah, yeah, it is. And we're definitely nice and slow. We're a little late, or a few seconds late now. Maybe a little bit more throttle to get us to the end of the platform. And uh, from what I understand, a lot of services um, it start and end here at Via Princesa. Because there is actually a branch that actually branches off in two different directions. And there we are. Perfect. All right, we're rolling again out of Via Princesa, and uh, actually, this does not go off to a, a new like branch. That actually just goes to that industry uh, right there's like a little warehouse thing. So uh, again, this would be a good place to put like some empty freight cars or even some loaded freight cars um, that uh, will probably sit there and uh, for the customer. But going ahead and continue to Vista Canyon. Yeah, yeah, we're a little fast, but uh, it's interesting how this section opens up as we go underneath the Antelope Valley Freeway. We get back down to 25 miles per hour. But the tracks, like, separate there. I'm not sure why, because there's not really anything in that field of grass there. So I don't know why we can't just have uh, the tracks like they are right now, just stay together, rather than split apart there right before we get to Vista Canyon. But anyways... We're almost there. Alright, here we are, creeping at a pace of 20 miles per hour, and yet another hot dog stand. <laughs> this is getting out of hand. Uh, we'll let it creep in, because we're already going fairly slow, 200 yards and counting. So this is the new Vista Canyon Station. Uh, which I believe is still yet to be opened. Um, I have to confirm that. I believe the bus station is open, but the train station is not yet complete. So it's pretty cool to um, to see like future stations, I guess you could say, um, being a part in train sim world. I know a lot of other uh, simulators tend to sometimes they'll make uh, you know a piece of content that's not quite yet out in real life because you know they're working with the real life counterpart which is pretty cool so good to see uh train Sim world actually you know kind of having the first of something rather than something old but anyways doors are open uh, this will be our final stop for this service uh the rest of the route will continue to the north all right that is it for this one thank you guys so much for watching hope you enjoyed the ride until next time Remember, you have three choices. Give up, give in, and give it all you got. Peace, love, and God bless you. I'll catch you guys in the next one.